national anthem. Almighty God, we thank you for making it possible for our guests and micro-entrepreneurs to witness the first year anniversary of Scaparate.com and for the privilege of making us all part of this momentous day. We thank you for the past year where you guided us in times we needed you the most. Bless us, Lord, with the determination, strength, and patience so that we will be able to continue our advocacy and our business with passion and confidence, marching onward to a strong and progressive Iskaparate. These things we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday, Mama Mary. Hello, everyone. I would like to greet our guests and, of course, our Nanay entrepreneurs. A lovely rainy Wednesday morning. Welcome to the first year anniversary of Iskaparate.com. I am your host, Josie, but most people know me as Jo Natividad, President and Chief Operating Officer of Iskaparate.com. If you may allow me, I will be talking both in English and in Tagalog. Una muna, show of hands, show of hands tayo, who traveled at least two hours to be here in this event. Of course, I'm referring to the internet connection, lalo na maulan. It seems all the internet providers are celebrating with us too, since I can see a lot with us here now. Today is a celebration we are all excited about because it is a significant occasion for Iskaparate, who has paved the way to help change the life of the micro-entrepreneurs. This is a great opportunity for you to know Iskaparate and why it was organized and for whom it was organized for. Bukod dito, gusto natin ma-recognize ang mga tao na si responsable sa buo, pagbuo ng Iskaparate. Of course, we want to keep you engaged and Iskaparate is feeling extra generous today. Di ba ganyan ang mga celebration? Magkakaroon po tayo ng tatlong trivia questions. Everyone here can join. Saan po kayo pwedeng sumagot? First, dito sa chat box ng Zoom. Second is Facebook page of iskaparate.com with an I po ang iskaparate. And then the close group Facebook page of Iskaparate Family. Tatlo po yan. Unahan lang po ang pagsagot ha para manalo. There will be five winners for each question. All the winners will receive 300 each. 300 pesos po, hindi dollars. Abangan natin ang mga questions mamaya-maya. Kaya stay tuned till the end of the program. And now... We will be showing you a video of how Iskaparate evolved. In 2020, 
with the looming threat of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Philippines, like most countries of the world, was plunged into a lockdown. Though necessary to protect the health of the public, the lockdown adversely affected the vast majority of micro-entrepreneurs. The biggest microfinance institutions in the country estimated that 9 million brick-and-mortar micro-enterprises, most of them women-led, had become invisible and inaccessible to buyers and were therefore in danger of not surviving. As a response, a group of social entrepreneurs created a platform that would put micro-entrepreneurs in the digital space. The micro-entrepreneurs were complaining that they could no longer sell the products because of the lockdown. Their stores were closed. Some were saying that their sales had dropped to zero. We thought then that the best response to the problem was to bring them online. Thus was born Iscaparate.com, an online marketplace where the entrepreneurial poor could showcase their products and be accessed by anyone in cyberspace. Launched on September 8, 2020, it started with only 33 entrepreneurial mothers who were members of Kabuhayan Saganap na Kasarinlan, a microfinance institution operating in the urban poor areas of Central Luzon, Metro Manila, and Calabarzon. Within a year, 14 other organizations with a collective membership of close to 300,000 joined the Iscaparate movement and helped their members become sellers in the marketplace. Today, there are almost 300 micro-entrepreneurs with their individual showcases in the platform. Iscaparate is an assisted platform where the seller is not left on their own, but is given access to online billing and payment services through Paymongo, online fulfillment support, training and mentoring, digital market support, and online selling events in cooperation with other progressive organizations. The goal of Iscaparate is to have 100,000 micro-entrepreneurs and 1 million products on the platform by 2026. Its vision is to be the face, the voice, and the muscle of the entrepreneurial poor and the global supply chain. Yeah, nakita na po natin ang evolution of iscaparate.com. Indeed, the humble beginnings of Iscaparate is inspiring, especially that this organization found a way to help and improve uh, the micro-entrepreneurs' lives at this time. Maraming salamat, Joey, at isa kang game changer para sa mga micro-entrepreneurs. Ngayon naman, the reason why we are celebrating we would like to honor and recognize our special guest. Iscaparate will not be where it is now if it were not for these hardworking women. Sila ang hindi sumusuko sa kahirapan. They continue to fight for survival where resources are limited. Kung meron tayong mga heroes ng health industry, sila naman ang mga warriors and heroes ng ekonomiya natin. Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome the first 33 nanays of iscaparate.com. They are members of Kabuhayan sa Ganap na Kasarilnan Credit and Savings Cooperative or what we call Kasaganaka. The nanays were from Calabarzon, Central Luzon, and Metro Manila. Sumunod naman sa 33 nanays noong September 21, 2020. The Office of the Vice President, Lenny Robredo, instead of launching its own e-commerce platform for women entrepreneurs, took notice and adopted Iscaparate.com as its e-commerce vehicle for its livelihood program, Angat Buhay. 
Let's have a glimpse of who they are, what they do, and what is special about them. Thank you, mga nanay. Yan ang mga micro-entrepreneurs who started it all for scaparate.com. If we all agree, 
get your glass with or without water, cup with or without coffee. And if you don't have any, a salute or toast to the pioneer nanais of escaparate.com and to all the other micro entrepreneurs in escaparate. Cheers. Okay. Ngayon po, sobrang sobrang sorry po at na-miss na out ko ang pinaka game, game changer. Nagpasalamat pa naman ako sa kanya. I would like to call on our principal founder and chair, uh, CEO of uh, Scaparate.com, Mr. Joey Bermudez. He was also the former president of Management Association of the Philippines former CEO of China Trust and Philippine Veterans Bank. He's also an educator, social entrepreneur, a book author. Kung kayo po ay may libro niya, maganda po yun. He's also the founder of Maybridge Financial. Pasensya, Joey. Maraming salamat, Joe. Um, <clears throat> I should share my screen uh, kasi ho, alam nyo, um, if I do not have any screen guide, I just go on and on and I waste a lot of your time. So I, I hope you can see my screen now. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Let me start with a quote from F. Scott Fitzgerald. Something that he told Ernest Hemingway about the very rich. He said, the very rich are different from you and me. I do not think that he said that in derogation. He was simply stating a fact that very often we think we know certain groups of people, certain cultures or certain individuals, but we really don't. So to second the motion, I in turn say, but the poor are even more different from you and me. All these years, I thought I knew the poor because of many years of having been involved in the social enterprise space. The last 12 months told me I knew very little about them. And at the height of the pandemic, I became convinced that it is not, it is never a good place to be poor. Can you imagine when the poor were being harassed at the checkpoints because they were defying quarantine and curfew? because they had to scrounge for their next meal. While in many Viber chat groups in many communities, the favorite topic was whether Joe Biden was going to be a better president than Donald Trump. Truly, there is very little we know about what makes the poor behave the way they do. That leads me to the genesis of scaparate.com. Scaparate.com, was meant to be a primarily a response to a temporary problem triggered by a temporary solution. COVID-19 was a temporary problem, supposedly, at least as early as last year. That is what people thought. And something that would blow over in maybe two months, three months. But it triggered eventually in March, a temporary solution, a global economic shutdown. As expected, the micro-entrepreneurs by June 2020 were feeling the brunt of the suffering. And to use a medical term, many of them needed financial intubation. And to be honest, a lot of them did not make it. In September 2020, Scaparate was launched. We started with 33 micro-entrepreneurs from Casaganaca, a co-op that operated in the urban uh, blighted areas in uh, Calabarzon, Metro Manila, and Central Zone. Escaparate was meant to be a short-term response. 
the platform that we created for the online poor was not exactly the best. It was the best we could cobble together under these circumstances because we needed a response that was quick because the problem was right here and now, and therefore we had to respond to it. <clears throat> we realized though that it, it would take a lot more for the entrepreneurial poor to perform very well in the online marketplace. First of all, you need to manage the digital transformation because the entrepreneurial poor need to make major adjustments to their business in order to perf perform well online. When we convinced the 33 nanas of Kasaganaka to join us, we told them, wala po kaming babaguhin sa inyong negosyo. Ang ginagawa lang po namin, dinadagdagan namin kayo ng isa pang tindahan, kaya lang online. We were honest when we said that because that was what we felt at that time. Today, we realize that certain adjustments need to be made to their businesses for them to perform well online. And therefore, we need to create an entire ecosystem around the online, online marketplace to address capability gaps that prevent the micro entrepreneur from performing well in an online platform, including, for example, store minding or tending the stores. When we launched Scaparate.com, we called, we mystery called, we mystery shop a lot of the nanas who were there and many were not answering their phones. And we asked them, nanay, bakit hindi mo naman sinasagot yung tawag ng mga customer? Hindi sayang yung mga order. So the answers they gave us were matter of fact answers, but they were very revealing to us. In the words of my friend, Mayan Ignacio, yung napakadali sa atin, e gabundok na hirap sa kanila. So the nanay said, sir, paano ko sasagutin yung tawag ng customer? Ginagamit ng anak ko yung aking telepono para sa online DepEd classes. Yung isa, sabi naman, sir, Nung tumatawi yung customer, nagluluto ako ng pansit palabok na i-deliver sa customer. Gusto ba masunog yung produkto? Yung isa naman, sabi niya, sir, yung telepono dala ng husband ko kasi nagde-deliver siya ng aming produkto sa so wala sa akin. And yung isa naman, sabi niya, sir, wala akong smartphone. Okay, so these are realities that we need to deal with when we have micro-entrepreneurs on the platform. So it's, it's so easy for us to say, dalin mo na lang sila online. Hindi mo na kailangan mag-create ng escaparate.com. Marami na may existing online marketplaces. The question is, are these online marketplaces friendly to them? Do they even welcome the micro-entrepreneurs or are they by their very nature hostile to the micro-entrepreneurs because of their unique economic circumstances? They need fulfillment support. Obviously, they do not have scale, and therefore they do not have the leverage to bargain for good fulfillment terms from the existing couriers. They need billing and payments. You know, all of them are one woman, one man operation, at most two, assisted by one child or husband and wife team. So how do you expect them to have a good back office? They need training. They're hungry for training. Every time we announce, in our Facebook family group that there's going to be training, almost all the nanas raise their hands and say, I want to be part of it. <clears throat> and fifth, they need digital marketing support. Do we expect the micro entrepreneurs to create social media content, one content every day as prescribed by social media experts? They cannot. So somebody needs to support them with that ecosystem. Now, <clears throat> we went through all that. Did it make sense? Was it even worth it? Nagkaroon ba kami ng epekto sa buhay ng mga tao? So let's look at real stories of real people. Let's look at Nanay Lea Mancera. Nandun siya kanina sa video. Uh, nagbibigay siya ng hanap buhay doon sa mga inmates ng Bilibid Penitentiary. Pero nagkaroon ng pandemic. Yung mga order sa kanya bumagsak nga. Noong May, yung Mayani.ph na aming partner, strategic partner in many uh, collaborations <clears throat> ay nakipagtulungan sa amin at gumawa sila ng uh, Mother's Day event to supply, uh, to, to allow people to buy Mother's Day gifts. And this Mother's Day gift consisted of flowers produced by the farmers of Mayani.ph, baskets produced by Nanay Lea Mancera, 
and ube cake produced by Caramia. Nana Ilea had to scramble to get workers to fulfill the orders that she received because she received a lot of orders. Let's talk about Nana Ann Ignacio, Martiniana Ignacio. She repairs aircons, installs aircons, uh, she makes shelves. No? Uh, in February or, or sometime in January this year, she uh, happily informed her colleagues in Casaganaca that she got a very good, a very substantial contract with a retail mall chain. And when she asked them, how did you eventually come to decide that I am your proper supplier? She was told, we vetted you, of course, we did research, we did our due diligence, and one of the things we found out about you was you are part of scaparate.com. Let's talk about Nanay Emmeline Rubrico. She was in the evolution video. Her plant had closed. She was producing mushrooms and she was processing them into mushroom chicharon. Then we onboarded her into scaparate.com. And all of a sudden, as she was saying in the video, the processing plant started humming with activity again. It came back to life. <clears throat> Nanay Casilda Guevara, she is not exactly poor, but she's a hardworking microentrepreneur. You talk about lockdowns. She has had more than any one of us had. Last year, when the Al Volcano erupted, her shop was closed because she was in the affected area in Batangas. And then finally, after six weeks, she reopened. And two weeks later, she had to close again because of the economic lockdown. So none, nonetheless, we onboarded Nana Casilda into escaparate.com in all of the selling events that we bring the Nanais too. Nanay Casilda is one of her best, one of the best performers, one of the best sellers, and her Spanish bread is so popular. Nanay Susan Noche of Oriental Mindoro, she produces dried fish along with her colleagues in Oriental Mindoro. She is part of the four piece beneficiaries. These are families receiving conditional cash transfers. So you can see that she properly describes herself and characterizes herself as the poorest of the poor. But yet they decided we will, we will try to uh, be on our own, to generate our own income so that we don't become dependent on conditional cash transfers. Again, in the selling events, she is one of the best performers. Talk about impact, talk about efforts making sense. I cannot say more. <clears throat> Let us fast forward everything. At launch time, launch, launch day, we had 33 micro entrepreneurs. Today, as we speak, we have 270. And every day that number changes we, because we keep onboarding new nanas every day. We had one partner organization when we started, Kasaganaka, that had 43,000 members. Today, we have 15 partner organizations with a collective membership of 300,000. From Metro Manila Plus, which means Metro Manila, Calabarzon, and Central Luzon at launch, it is now escaparate.com is in all regions of the country, including some of the strife tone areas uh, in Southern Philippines, precisely in Mindanao. From around 200 products at launch, there are now over 2,000 products being sold on the platform. From being a pure classified at launch, it has now brought select groups of vendors into 12 online selling events so far this year. From just the founding partners, starting with myself and my son sitting on this, precisely this dining table and talking about how a website of uh, like Escaparated could, could uh, come into being. We eventually expanded the group and started talking to people who took us seriously, Nola Vansenia. Ben Abansenia, Ben Ignacio, my colleagues in Maybridge Finance, Chito Sumabat, and John Atividad. And we were able to launch in September. And this year, we have been joined by like-minded souls, Philip Ong, Mark L. Shaw, one of our uh, partners in SME lending from uh, Backbone in Luxembourg, and uh, attorney Reggie Nolido. So this is a growing family of like-minded investors, people who believe in the mission of Escaparate. 93% 93 of our vendors are women, 65% sell food, and 20% of them aim to be green businesses. Somewhere along the way, we found out, or at least COVID-19 made it clear that 
it has no intention to leave, at least not yet. So it is no longer a short-term problem. And lockdowns from being a temporary solution has now become almost a stock response, a recurring response with no time limits. Of course, they will say two weeks, but after two weeks, there'll be another queue for another two weeks and another form of queue for another two weeks. The injury to micro enterprises is no longer there for temporary. It's, the wounds are now deep and the devastation is continuing with no end in sight. And therefore, if Iscaparate must remain relevant, it has to become now a strategic solution, not just a tactical response. As a solution, it has to remain equal in magnitude to the problem. Therefore, as a strategic response, Iscaparate will be a sustainable enterprise. It is capitalized for scale today. It is operationally disciplined. It is interesting to the target audience of the vendor population. And we're striving to be positioned for continued growth. We are moving to a new platform soon that will hopefully give the users, the buyers of the Nanais a better experience. And we will create an e-commerce option for selected vendors. We will strengthen our capability to store mine and to support the fulfillment activities of our uh, Nanais. And a store that allows individual vendors to aggregate and bundle, something that uh, our a strategic partner, Mayani.ph, has collaborated with us on starting uh, as late as, as early as late last year okay, and has come into effect. And therefore, at some point in time, we will be able to bring the best of the nanas into that store. Our five year target is to have 100,000 vendors in Escaparate selling 1 million products. <clears throat> the last 12 months, I'd be the first to admit, we struggled. We made a lot of mistakes. We learned. But that is what a learning platform ought to be. It continues to morph. And we will morph until we take on that shape and size that fits the micro entrepreneur. And when the shoe begins to fit, maybe, or just maybe, the poor will now begin to look no different from you and me. At that point, I will have no answer for F. Scott Fitzgerald. He can keep talking about the very rich, but I can no longer tell him that the poor look different from you and me. Thank you very much. You're muted, Joe. Thank you, Joey. Isa kang game changer talaga. Sa iska parate, ikaw parate ang bida. <clears throat> okay, so ngayon, as we celebrate life, we would like also to remember people who have left us. Uh, may we request a moment of silence and we can show the videos of the people who would like to remember. Carmelita Duran was part of the 33 nanas and a mother of three in Payatas, Quezon City, who made quality bayongs for a living. Nanay Norma Lejano made kitchen cabinets, windows and aluminum and an aluminum and glass contractor. Jojo Mancho was an entrepreneur from Rodriguez Rizal who installed, maintained and repaired air cons. He was the husband of Martiniana Mancho, one of the stalwarts in Casaganaca and a proud entrepreneur in Scaparate.com.
Okay. So ngayon, di ba sabi ko sa inyo nung una, we want to keep you engaged. We will now start the first of the three trivia questions. Una, type nyo ang answer nyo, uh, letter, actually letter, no? Huwag na yung sagot, yung, pang, yung word, no? Letter na lang. Uh, sa chat box dito sa Zoom, and then uh, sa Facebook page ng iskaparate.com, iskaparate with an I, at saka sa closed family page, Facebook, Facebook page of Iskaparate Family. Ang una nating question ay... Okay, uh, okay. What product was promoted in iskaparate.com FB page last September 1, 2021? Letter A, palabok ni Nanay Jenny. Letter B, choco banana loaf ni Nanay M. And letter C, hand-painted wood ni Nanay Corazon. Okay, letters lang ang inyong isusulat. Okay, so okay na tayo. Actually, uh, simpleng plug po yan sa mga produkto ng mga nanay sa iskaparate. Ang iba po dyan, actually, iba sa mga pagkain dyan, natikman ko na po at natikman na rin ng iba. Kaya paulit-ulit nilang ino-order. Okay. And now, to make this event more memorable, we would like to hear from the people who believe in iskaparate and have been its biggest enablers. Magandang umaga, mga nanay iska o mga kasama namin sa Project Iskaparate. Ako po si Mayan Ignacio ng Kasagana Ka Credit and Savings Cooperative. Uh, kami po sa K-Coop ay natutuwa dahil nakaabot na tayo ng isang taon. Parang kailan lang ng uh, pinag-uusapan namin ang patungkol sa pagtulong sa mga nanay sa panahon na uh, pagsubok no, dahil sa dala ng pandemya. Pero kayo po ay patuloy na nagbibigay ng inspirasyon sa amin, lalong-lalo na ang mga naunang mga nanay na nagsubok kumamit ng bagong paraan para uh, mabigyan ng uh, sistema ng pagmamarket o pagbibenta ang ating mga nanay. Kaya kami po sa Kikoop ay uh, patuloy na uh, nagdarasal at nagsusumikap para kayo ay uh, mabigyan ng pagkakataon na makilala ang inyong mga produkto, mga pagbenta at para kumita. Sana po ang uh, K-Coop ay uh, nakatulong no? at patuloy namin ipagdarasal. Lalong lalo na birthday ni Mama Mary, hihingi po tayo sa kanya ng dagdag na basbas na tayo ay tulungan niya, niya para uh, maging maunlad ang ating mga negosyo. Kaya mga nanay iska, lalong lalo na ang mga kasama namin sa K-Coop, huwag po kayong panghihinaan ng loob, lagi po kayong uh, may pag-asa at uh, tuloy ang sipag, no, ang pagtsatsaga para ang ating mga pamilya ay meron uh, paraan para uh, matutuloy ang kanilang mga ginagawa, matuloy ang kanilang mga pangarap kahit pa sa napakahirap na, na panahon. Kaya mga nanay, congratulations, no? isang mainit na pagbati at yakap sa inyong lahat, lalong-lalo na uh, ang mga iska na miyembro ng aming kooperatiba. Salamat po. Hello, mga iska parate nanay. Happy, happy anniversary or happy first birthday. Um, ako, sobrang makananay talaga ako because I was raised by a single mother. Yung nanay ko went through so much very very difficult moments in our lives at dumaan talaga kami sa hirap at nakita ko kung how she stayed true to herself and to her determination to take care of her uh, five five girls coming lahat kaya ngayon pag nakakakita ko ng mga nanay na nagta-try hard para lang hindi maligaw ang kanila mga anak at Makapag, makabili ng mga kailangan ng mga anak nila. Sobrang sobrang ina-admire ko lahat ng mga nanay na ganito. At nakikita ko talaga sa iskaparate na ganun kayo. 
Kaya excited akong bumili, excited ako mag-promote sa inyo. I don't need anything for to do this, pero gustong gusto ko lang talagang makita na hindi kayo mawalan ng pag-asa, na kahit na ang hirap-hirap na ng pinagdadaanan natin, tuloy-tuloy pa rin ang pag-asa. Alam ko, napakahirap ng mundo ngayon, pero kapit lang, laban lang. Matatapos din ito. At sa dulo ng lahat, makikita natin na tayo ay naging mas masaya dahil tayo ay magkakasama. So, never give up. Lagi akong nandito at bibili sa inyo. Happy Anniversary! Hi Joey! Good morning! Magandang magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Uh, I'd like to congratulate Joey and askiskaparate.com for launching this very noble, very innovative um, social business. Alam nyo, this is really very good because and this will really help our nanays. Actually Joey, ang galing, very creative ka. Uh, this is what we really need for our micro entrepreneurs because through your iskaparate.com application maraming mga nanays micro entrepreneurs ang makapag uh, lalagay ng kanilang mga products and services through your iskaparate.com app and uh, you're actually doing a very good service in our poverty eradication. I understand also na marami na ring MFI ang sumasali sa iyo. I think uh, I will also encourage our membership from Card MRI, those who are doing uh, services like yung kanilang food, uh, food processing, and other kinds of projects, and other kinds of income generating projects na sumali rin dito sa application ninyo dito sa inyong uh, social business. The beauty about this uh, iskaparate.com ay this really will bring our micro entrepreneurs in the mainstream of our economy. Kasi you're able to bring it to a marketplace. Hindi na kailangan umalis ng nanay from, his, from her place or ng mga tatay from the place of uh, their uh, projects or yung kanilang income generating projects, they can just post it through your uh, app, app at uh, they can now uh, sell their products and services. Again, congratulations, Joey. And uh, I hope uh, more uh, clients will join this uh, application, iskaparate.com, and I wish you all the luck. Thank you very much. I'm currently here in... Summer later, doing the rounds of uh, our uh, visit to our clients. Maraming maraming salamat. Thank you. Hello sa lahat ng mga women entrepreneurs na bahagi ng iskaparate. Ang bilis ng panahon nyo. Isang taon na pala simula nung una natin nilaunch ang iskaparate. Alam kong hindi naging madali ang nakaraang taon para sa lahat, pero nakaka-proud na sa kabila ng hinaharap natin, tuloy pa rin kayo sa paghahanap buhay. Talagang hindi kayo nagpadaig sa mga hamon ng panahon. Sabi ko naman nun, hindi dahil may COVID-19, titigil na rin ang mga programa at pag-abot natin sa mga nangangailangan. Kaya gumawa kami ng paraan para makapagnegosyo pa din kayo kahit online. Ang mensahe ko ngayon, padayan lang. Huwag magpaparalay sa takot at pangamba. Pag-usahin pa ang sarili at ibuhos ang oras at lakas para sa kailangan gawin dito at ngayon. Kami naman sa OVP, pati ang iba pa nating partners, nandito lang para umalalay. Para mas maiangat ninyo ang inyong sarili, mas mapabuti ninyo ang inyong kabuhayan, at gawing mas matibay ang pundasyon ng inyong pagiging mga women entrepreneurs. Kaya in the days to come, sana ay manatili kayong energized, engaged, and inspired. In the work that you do with the community that you have built, patuloy tayong humugot ng lakas sa isa't isa. Excited na ako sa darating ng mga araw, lalo na dahil sigurado akong nadami pa tayo at lalalim pa lalo ang pagsasama natin. Happy anniversary sa ating lahat. Maraming salamat at mabuhay kayong lahat. Oh, 
Okay. Thank you so much for your inspiring words, mga greeters, and all those who, who helped and supported Iskaparate.com. Uh, you know, you inspire and motivate us in Iskaparate to work even harder to seek out opportunities for the nanais and micro-entrepreneurs to be discovered and counted in, the, in a wider market without being drowned by the bigger players. Ngayon, meron tayong greeters no? from our enablers. We would like to hear from some nanais. Ano naman ang masasabi nila sa iskaparate? Congratulations po, iskaparate.com. Happy one year old po. Parang kailan lang po na nagsimula tayo ay uh, ilan lang po kaming mga nanay iska. Uh, proud po ako na isa po ako sa um, pioneer po. At ngayon po ay napakarami na po nating mga nanay na kasali, mga kaiska. Maraming salamat po sa inyo at um, tinutulungan niyo po ang mga nanay na ma-promote ang kanilang uh, business, ang kanilang mga produkto online. Maraming maraming salamat po sa bumubuo po ng iskaparate.com uh, Sir, uh, Sir Joey, Ma'am Jo, Ma'am Rainy at sa lahat po ng bumubuo pa. Uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo. At ganun din, maraming salamat din po sa aming bridge uh, kila Sir Willie po at marami po kong iba na nagbabahagi po ng kanilang uh, kaalaman, libre po na ibinibigay nila sa mga nanay para ibahagi nila ang kanilang karanasan at kanilang kaalaman. Hindi po nila pinagdamot ang mga nalalaman nila para rin po ang mga nanay din po ay maging successful po doon sa kanila kanilang mga negosyo. Maraming salamat po. At ganun din po, maraming salamat din po sa Kikoop at Kasaga, kasagana ka na walang tigil po ng uh, paghahanap ng, ng mga partners kung paano po matulungan ang mga nanay members kung paano po maiangat ang kanilang mga negosyo. Maraming maraming salamat po. Ilang po, congratulations po at sana po ay mas marami pa pong taon at mas marami pa po kayong mga nanay at marami pa mga produkto na maibahagi online. Maraming maraming salamat po. God bless po sa ating lahat. Keep safe po. Thank you. Hello po mga kaiska. Magandang buhay po kahit may pinagdaraanan tayo bunsod ng COVID-19 pandemic. This is Lani Elben Camino, the sole proprietor of Sweet Bulakenia Foods. Sweet Bulakenia Foods is a dairy manufacturing business specialized in quesong puti and other innovative products made from carabao's milk and quesong puti itself. To name some of our products, we have the not-so-famous quesong puti that comes in different types. Quesong puti bars, quesong puti mini, fried quesong puti, and quesong puti rolls which are completely wrapped in banana leaves. We also have quesong puti spread, which is pimiento and cream cheese. Our original and best-selling products are quesong puti filled empanadas, quesong puti nuggets, and quesodillo. Mga inimbento ko lang po ang mga yan, pero bumibenta naman. It's my pride also to showcase our sweet foods such as ube jam, very famous now, pastillas de leche, yema, and ube candy. Paano po kami nasali sa skaparate? Femi has been good to us for many years now. Thanks so much to Sir Nolo, Sir Ben, Sir Ronald, and Sir Willie, and the rest of the Femi family for keeping mm. us around. Thank you so much for inviting us to join in this platform. This is but a noble platform. This caparate opens door for me to reach a full potential market because they do the task for me. It also paves the way to make the people realize the value of helping the farmers and the micro-entrepreneurs. Our sincerest gratitude to you is Caparate family, Ma'am Jo, Ma'am Rami, Saradel, Ma'am Presi, and all, for giving us this opportunity despite difficulties and challenges that come along during these trying times. God bless your goodwill. Rest assured of our commitment and dedication. Mabuhay po kayo. 
<laughs> Isang mapagpalang araw po sa ating lahat na naririto sa programang ito ngayong araw. Ako, si Ginang Clarissa Punong Bayan Gloria ng Paso de Cyrus, ay malugod na bumabati ng isang maligayang unang taong anibersaryo sa kapwa ko iska at isko dito sa iska parate. Nais ko lamang din pong kunin ang pagkakataong ito na makapagpasalamat sa programang Angat Buhay at sa tanggapan ng ating butihing Vice Presidente, Ginang Lenny Robredo. Sa tulong ng programang Angat Buhay, ako ay nabigyan ng pagkakataon na makapasok sa online platform ng Iskaparate. Ang Iskaparate ang nagbukas pintuan at nagbigay ng oportunidad upang mas mapalawig ang aking karanasan sa pagnanegosyo. Sa tulong ng Iskaparate, mas lumawak at dumami pa ang nakakakilala sa aking napiling negosyo. Naniniwala ako na wala sa kasarian ang pagtatagumpay ng isang tao. Bagkos, nasa dedikasyon mo lamang ito kung paano mo mapagtatagumpayan ang negosyo mo. Naniniwala ako na sa bawat isang isko, iska, sa isang tahanan ay may roong katangian o kakayahang taglay. Dapat lang natin ilabas ang talentong meron tayo at kung saan larangan tayo nararapat. Hindi pa po dito nagtatapos ang magandang oportunidad na ipinagkaloob sa atin ng iskaparate. Pagkos, simula pa lamang po ito ng magandang hakbang para sa mas malago at isang matagumpay na pagnenegosyo. Walang nagsisimula sa malaki, lahat ay nagsisimula sa maliit. Iyo lamang itong pag-aaralan kung paano mo pa maipagyayaman ang iyong kasanayan sa iyong napiling larangan. At kahit na marami tayong gampanin bilang babae, bilang asawa, bilang nanay o kapatid, Naway pagsusumikapan pa lalo natin mapalago ang tulong ipinagkaloob sa atin ng iskaparate. At higit sa lahat, huwag natin makakalimutan ang mga taong tumulong sa atin para mas makilala pa ang ating produkto sa mas malaki at malawak na pamamaraan. Muli, maraming salamat po Sir Joey Bermudez at maraming salamat din po Ma'am Josie Natividad. Maraming salamat sa isang taong punong-puno ng kaalaman, iskaparate. Sa isang isko at iska na maiaangat, pag nagtulungan ang lahat, sabay-sabay tayong aangat. Muli po, maligayang unang taong, anibersaryo, iskaparate. Mabuhay at salamat po. Maraming salamat, Nanay Jenny, Nanay Lani, and Nanay Clarissa. Inuulit ko po, mga audience, nanonood dito ngayon, ang mga produkto po ng iskaparate.com ay magaganda po at masasarap. Itry nyo po. Punta lang po kayo sa iskaparate.com. Okay. Ready na ba kayo sa second trivia question? Sagutin nyo lang po ito sa Facebook page of iskaparate.com, chat box dito, or sa close group of family, iskaparate family, and dun sa FB Live. Naka-live po tayo sa FB. Okay, number two is, from where do our iskaparate entrepreneurs exotic yakan products come from? K, letter K po ito ha, Mindoro. Letter L, Bohol, and letter M, Basilan. Okay na? Nakasagot na kayo? Okay. Um, now, you know, we thought very hard about what anniversary gift to give our courageous micro-entrepreneurs. After much reflection, we realized that in a time of great anxiety and fear, the best gift you can give anyone is hope and optimism. That is why we invited a resource person who is known to always see the positive and the good in every situation. It would be an injustice to give him a long introduction because there is hardly any Filipino who hasn't heard of him. Ladies and gentlemen, let me call on Dr. Bernardo Villegas Preeminent economist, professor at Harvard University, and the Instituto Estudios Superiores de la Empresa or ES, and a member of the 1986 Constitutional Commission and Patriot. 
audience, while Dr. Villegas is talking, you may type in your questions in the chat box and he will try to answer them. Let's hear from you, Dr. Villegas. Yes. Happy first anniversary to all of you involved with Escaparate.com. You know, I was already suggested by Mayan Ignacio. Probably mga katoliko sa atin, alam natin na today is the birthday of the super nanay, Mama Mary. And I think for those of us who believe in prayers, we should really pray to her to help us overcome all the difficulties that we're encountering because of this pandemic. But we know that prayers will only be effective if we put all the human effort we're capable of. And one of that is to make sure that we run our respective businesses, no matter how small, as competently and professionally as possible. And I'm sure that is what you appreciate Iskparader.com is doing to assist you. I'd like to help you do one very important thing that business people should be doing, which is to look ahead and face whatever risks, dangers there may be in the future, as well as the opportunities that you can take advantage of. And my presentation will be both light and shadow. You know, I'm known to be always optimistic. However, I must be realistic about the next six to 12 months. Unfortunately, we are still going to struggle against lockdowns, MECQ. We haven't seen the worst of the virus. Delta is just one of them. We may have another more dangerous virus that will come. I don't want to frighten you, but let's be prepared. You know, in the same way that yesterday, there were a lot of announcements about all of us being prepared for Typhoon Jolina. Fortunately, now in Manila, we still haven't been hit. I know in Batangas, na sila. Now, let me tell you about the problems that we still have to face in the next six to 12 months. You know, in third quarter natin, where we have so many lockdowns, not only in NCR, but in Davao, in Iloilo, in Cebu, and so on and so forth, babaksak na naman ang ekonomiya. Yung tinatawag na GDP, it will again decline. The only hope we have for this year is from probably November to December. When whatever happens, we Filipinos will want to celebrate Christmas. And we will spend a lot. And where will the money come from? Fortunately, the more than 10 million Filipinos abroad have been sending still $33, $34 billion worth of remittances. Alam ba niyo, the last year, when bumagsak ang ating ekonomiya by 9.1%, the biggest in recent memory, yung mga remittances declined only minus 0.3%. Oh, practically, it did not decline. And yung first six months of this year, nag-increase na ng 6% yung mga remittances. These are our real heroes. And that is why especially towards the end of the year, they become more generous. We will have a lot of spending. Kaya, ihanda na ninyo ang inyong mga produkto. Especially anything to do with food. I'm so glad to know that the majority of you are in food. Because the sector that is going to recover very fast is what is known as food and agribusiness. Yung food and agribusiness, hindi lang yung farming. Nabanggit ni Joey yung may ani. So that's another application that's helping farmers 
to get the best prices for their products through the internet, through all the digital technology that they have. But remember, agribusiness, practically all of you in food are in agribusiness. And even those of you who deliver, that's part of agribusiness. Agribusiness is farming, post-harvest, it's called cold storage, logistics, processing, which many of you are doing, retailing, and that is going to recover more quickly than the others. It's a no brainer. Food is the number one requirement of any family, rich or poor. Of course, for the poor, the percentage spent on food is much higher, anywhere from 40 to 50%. While for the rich, it can only be anywhere from 10 to 15%. But food is always the first to recover. Then anything to do with basic commodities, anything to do with clothing, anything to do with housing, repairs, improvements, and so on and so forth. Furniture, you know, mga producto na madalis mag-recover. But the full recovery will come only in the second semester of next year. Between now and the first semester of 2022, marami pa tayong obstacles because it will take a long time for us to reach herd immunity. I'm sad to say that we mismanage very badly our response to COVID-19. I don't want to dwell into all this scandal, all the money that has been stolen and so on and so forth. But even the delays, even the very slow rollout of the vaccine. We really stick out like a sore thumb, especially compared to some of our neighbors. And that is why I'm not optimistic in the short run. Pero pagdating ng second semester of 2022, our economy will begin to grow once again at the rate at which it was growing before the pandemic. 6%. And as we move towards 2025, 2028, that growth will accelerate to seven to 8% because of our very strong fundamentals that have not been erased by the pandemic. And that is what I'd like to show you with data. You know, I don't expect you to believe in me just because I'm the one saying it. I want to make sure that we have evidence. And the evidence is coming not from Philippine institutions, self-serving propaganda of our government, or even from private research groups here. All of these things I'm going to tell you are coming from think tanks, financial institutions, World Bank, ADB, that say many good things about us because they see that we have a strong foundation of the economy that we have built over a period of 20 years. It was a slow and painful process, but we are getting there. So let me first give you our first fundamental, please, the first slide. The first one is what we can call our geographic dividend. We are right in the epicenter of the most dynamic economic region today. Countries in the so-called Asian century, if you take a look at the right graph. I'm sure some of you have heard that the last century, the 20th century was called the American century. Without doubt, ang pinakmagaling na economy during the last century was the US. In fact, Europe and Japan tried to compete. They never were able to dethrone the US. But take a look at the bottom table. Before the pandemic, 
these countries in the American century were struggling to grow at 0.8 for Japan, 1.8 for the Eurozone, and 2.9 for the US. Very slow growth rates. And there's no reason to believe that after the pandemic is put under reasonable control, that they can grow faster than these growth rates. Why? Because all of them have very high per capita incomes already, $40,000 or above. This, for comparison, we have not even reached $4,000 here in the Philippines. So, napakatasa na kanilang GDP, mahirap to grow at 6 to 7%. And to make matters worse, especially the Eurozone and Japan, they have committed demographic suicide. Wala na silang babies. Their fertility rate is so low and their aging people are so many that they are actually dragging the economy down. Can you just imagine a country where 30% of the population are over 65 and they don't have young people to take care of them? The perfect example is Japan. That's why Japan has not grown over 1% to 2% now for several decades. But take a look at the right. The so-called Asian century countries. The ASEAN, to which we belong, was growing an average of 5.2 before the pandemic. And the Philippines, as you know, was growing above average. We were averaging 6.4% before the pandemic. India was growing at 7.1%. China, 6.6%. All these rates are about two to three times the American century growth rates. China had slowed down, and China will slow down in the next five to 10 years because of what I said. China also committed demographic suicide with their one child policy that they have been trying to reverse over the last five years with no effect. Four years ago, the Chinese government told the Chinese caucus, now you can have two instead of one. No response. Then just last year, they said, you can have three. No response. That was also the experience of Singapore. Singapore for 20 years tried to undo their demographic suicide. Singapore has not succeeded. So that is why the next demographic dividend is what we have after the, the graphic dividend. I'd like to show you just some other uh, charts. Please, next slide, please. You know, sometime in 2004, just at the beginning of this uh, millennium, an economist from a bank called Goldman Sachs coined the acronym BRIC to stand for Brazil, Russia, India, and China. Unfortunately for Brazil and Russia, somewhere along the way, they're mismanaged their economies. Now, no one is excited about Brazil and Russia, but India and China remain, and investors have added the ASEAN economic community to which we belong. So that's another advantage that we have over the next five to 10 years. Investors from all over the world will be focusing on India, China, and the ASEAN. And we better be ready to accept investments from both our own Filipino investors and from foreign investors. That's something that we are still trying to convince our legislators to do, to make the Philippines more attractive by removing so many restrictions Again, foreign investments. Next, please. You know, let's say economists that talk about BRIC added what they call the next 11 emerging engines of growth. I take a look at the list Bangladesh, Egypt, Indonesia, Iran, Mexico, Nigeria, Pakistan, the Philippines, South Korea, Turkey, and Vietnam. It is notable that only three ASEAN countries among 10 were included among 
these promising emerging energy worlds. To remember those three, just think of VIP, not very important person, but Vietnam, Indonesia, and the Philippines. The three largest economies of the ASEAN, very rich in natural resources, and managed well by their respective governments. Vietnam is now the star. It just surpassed the Philippines in GDP per capita last year because it has developed its agriculture much more successfully than we have. It has opened up to more foreign investments, three times our foreign investments. And that is why we were left behind. in Southeast Asia, except of course for Myanmar, Laos, and Cambodia. But compared to our peers, we are now struggling. And the answer is rural and agricultural development. And that's why those of you who are in rural areas and producing all types of products, especially related to food, to agribusiness, are going to help us overcome that number one weakness of the Philippines, that we are poor in agribusiness. You know, Vietnam 10 years ago was practically not producing coffee because their government was very good in giving their farmers farm to market roads, irrigation systems, all the things that they needed to be productive. You know, Vietnam now is the number one, ex number one exporter of coffee in the world, having surpassed Brazil, it was America. But definitely it was not America, it was achieved because of good management by their government. Now, fortunately, we have a good Secretary of Agriculture now in William Dar. He's laying the foundation for long-term growth in agricultural productivity, in which many of you who are involved in food production will be involved. Next, please. You know, one of the most prestigious think tanks in the world, Oxford Economics, came out in November 2019, just before the pandemic with this list. The 10 leading emerging markets that will dominate the global economy in the next decade. Surprise, surprise, the Philippines is number two. And I repeat, this is completely independent of any Philippine influence. They made this list on the basis of facts, of what they see. And those facts are the fundamentals I am enumerating for you. So India number one, in fact, India, five years from now, will have a population larger than China because China is already declining in population while India continues to grow. And China is number four here precisely because of that, because of their aging problem. Next, please. Another British institution called the Center for Economic and Business Research projected the world economy all the way up to 2035. And take a look at what they say about the Philippines. In 2020, we were number 32. In 2035, we'll be number 22. We will improve 10 ranks, the most improved among these countries out of 193 countries. So the Philippines, again, is being assessed very positively by an outside think tank. So these are reasons why you, Nanais, can be very optimistic if you take a planning horizon of anywhere from three to five years and beyond. So don't be depressed because of the difficulties that we will encounter in the next six to 12 months. I repeat, we may still see some more virulent version of COVID. And we may have more lockdowns, but go beyond the next 12 months and see all of these that outsiders are saying about our country. Next, please. You know, again, 
the professionals among you, the bankers, etc., I'm sure, read a weekly publication also from the UK called The Economist. At the height of the pandemic, this was in May 2022, May 2020, they listed emerging economies rank on four measures of financial strength. And the Philippines is number six. Take a look at the countries that we surpassed, Thailand, Saudi Arabia, China, Vietnam, Nigeria, Poland, and so on and so forth. Why do you think the economist thinks highly of our financial strength? The reason is, as I said, over the last 20 years, the best minds, the best brains were appointed in very important positions in the government, managing our monetary, our fiscal, our macro macroeconomic sector. And all of these people have contributed to building strong institutions. For example, our central bank is considered one of the best in East Asia. Our governors have been ranked as the best central governors year in and year out, including this present governor. If you take a look at these institutions, at least no matter how you may think of our present president as not the best one that we have elected, he at least has respected the autonomy of his economic managers, not the Department of Health, but all the economic institutions that count, Central Bank, NEDA, Bank of Finance, have been allowed to do their own thing and they have been doing the right things. For years, our debt to GDP ratio has been kept at 30 to 40%. One of the best in the world. You know, debt to GDP ratios of Japan, of the US, of Italy can be anywhere from 100 to 150%. We were very responsible, thanks to all of these best minds that had been managing these institutions. That is why when the pandemic broke, we had a lot of elbow room to borrow, 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 because there was no alternative. In order to spend those billions in Bayani and one, Bayani and two, Bayani three, we had to borrow. And we had the leeway to bring the debt to GDP ratio closer to 70%, which already is dangerous. That is why we will not be able to borrow more once the pandemic is put under control. And that is why we need so much long-term capital from abroad. I keep on telling the government that. The next government will be in a very difficult situation because we have reached our borrowing limit. The only way we can continue, build, 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 to put up more and more businesses is to attract capital from abroad. That will be looking for the best places. And as I said, the Philippines is considered one of the best places to bring in capital. Next, please. <clears throat> this is the longest forecast ever made by Hong Kong Shanghai Bank. This was done in 2004 when it was not yet clear that we would graduate from our bad reputation of the sick man of Asia. Nevertheless, Hong Kong Shanghai Bank again so fundamentals in the Philippine economy. He did not see the Philippines growing at 6 to 7% yet, which happened only from 2011 to 2019. But the Hong Kong Shanghai Bank was very optimistic. Take a look at what the Hong Kong Shanghai Bank said the Philippines would be in 2050. The 16th largest economy in the world, surpassing Indonesia, which would have a population probably three times ours, Australia, Argentina, Malaysia, Thailand, Netherlands, that was quite a very positive assessment of our potentials. So this will show you that when I am optimistic about the long term, I am not saying those things because I'm a Filipino. I'm saying these things because outsiders have said good things about us. Next, please. Just before the pandemic, before we started borrowing, 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 which was necessary, the Japan Credit Rating Agency 
upgraded our credit standing from triple B plus to A minus. Again, the Japanese are very strict in looking at countries because countries will all over the world want to borrow from Japan. And so they must re rely on their credit rating agency. That's what they said just before the pandemic. Obviously today, with our higher debt to GDP ratio, with our higher uh, deficit in our budget, we're no longer uh, A minus, we're back to triple B plus. But we have enough competent people to take over from the present ones in the next administration. And they can manage once again the monetary, fiscal, and macroeconomic sectors competently. Next, please. So, just to summarize what I have been enumerating demogra demographic dividend, we have a young, growing, and English-speaking population. You know, our median age is 24. That's one of the lowest in the world. And that gives rise to two of our strongest engines of growth. <clears throat> I mentioned one of them already, our 10 million or more overseas workers. They wouldn't be there if we didn't have, we didn't have a young population. If most of us were over 65, we wouldn't be going abroad. Thanks to our young and growing population, we can afford to supply the world and still have enough for us. I'm not really that worried about the brain drain as long as we improve the quality of education. We will have both for us and for the many countries that are asking for Filipino workers in particular, especially in health and caregiving. I'm sure during the pandemic, you've heard about so many testimonials to our nurses and uh, caregivers from the Queen of England, from the Prime Minister of England, from the Mayor of New York, and so many other leaders from abroad. Geographic dividend, I will explain to you, we are in a region in which people are still willing to trade with one another freely. Unlike some advanced countries, America first, Brexit, they are going against free trade and investment. Here, we have countries that are open to trade and we should take advantage of that. What is a temporal dividend that actually should give you also ideas about what businesses to get into? You know, when a family becomes middle class, graduating from low income, it's clear from data over at least the last two centuries, in fact, this is called Engels law. The family will not spend more and more again on camote, on rice, on the very basic things. They will spend more and more on more sophisticated products. And that is why you, Nanais, should think precisely of how middle class families will graduate from Kang Kong, from very, very basic things, to the things that some of you are experts you know, which is Sans Rival, whether it is all types of uh, dessert that is more sophisticated than just banana cube and so on and so forth. That will be the shift of Filipino families to more sophisticated food products, more sophisticated clothing products, more sophisticated furniture. And that is where you have to be ready to also graduate from very basic things that you're producing to more sophisticated things. We still have a lot of natural resources. In fact, right now, our mining industry is booming. Thanks to the uh, removal of the restrictions that were imposed in the former administration, because now copper and nickel prices are very high. And we are taking advantage of that. But we still have a lot of room in the area of food exports beyond bananas and pineapples. We can shift our rice farms more and more 
to avocado, to durian, to coffee, to cacao. That is what was done by Thailand and Vietnam. And some of you are very much involved there. Some of your products eventually will follow the example of the chocolate producers in Davao that are now world-class. I see some of you really evolving into producing things that will go beyond the Filipino market. And especially as we recover in tourism, our islands are still among the best in the world. In fact, Palawan was rated the best island resort in the world by a travel and leisure magazine, better than Bali, better than Hawaii. And once in 2025, that's where I see foreign tourism recovering, we will have a lot of foreign tourists here, especially from the Indo-Pacific region. But even before that, domestic tourism will recover and not nice, you should be ready for all of your specialties that Filipinos from Manila, from Cebu, from the urban centers will want to buy the same way that many of us have been buying ubi jam from the nuns in Baguio. It will not only be Baguio, it will be all over the Philippines where you are located. And do, there will be 60 million of us, which was the number before the pandemic, traveling from outside our home to Siargao, to Siquijor, to Bohol, to many of these islands. Palawan is, of course, number one. Notice I did not even mention Boracay, which is overrated. We have hundreds of islands that can be better than Boracay. But then those of you who are there should take advantage of the presence of those domestic tourists to sell to them all sorts of specialty products. Fortunately, our government has continued the Build Build program that was actually started during the uh, Noi Noi administration. But fortunately, the, the third administration has kept the percentage of infrastructure at five to 6%. It's a very good performance. And that will be continued by at least the next two presidents. Our infrastructure is still so way behind our neighbors. That's why it is a no brainer. Any president who takes over, we just have to follow the example of President Duterte in spending six to 7% of GDP on infrastructure, but with a lot of help from foreigners. And that is why we have to open up our infrastructure sector, especially uh, telecom, for example, and the public utilities. That is where we're now struggling to have our Congress free up this sector. Now, the last thing I'd like to say is the good news over the next five to 10 years is that growth will no longer be in Metro Manila. In fact, even before the pandemic, Metro Manila was growing more slowly than Calabar Zone, than Davao, than even Bicol. And that will intensify after the pandemic. And you take a look at what is happening now in this area. The movement of residences and industries is towards Calabar Zone. You know, if you ask some of the younger married couples where they plan to reside, it's really from Ayala Alabang to New Valley to Santa Rosa to Binyang, all the way up to the Batangas Fort. That will be the new Metro Manila in the next 10 years. And that's why those of you who are from Calabar Zone are very fortunate. You will have a huge market. And before I forget it, I hope some of you are expanding your plantito and plantito projects into real businesses, selling high value vegetables and fruits that you can get from some technology companies like Harvest, like Isvo Seeds. You can transform even just a hundred uh, square meter of empty lot into a very profitable high value garden. And your advantage is you are right in the middle of 14 million people in the uh, Calabar Zone and Metro Manila area who are your market. And the other expansion of Manila is, and I'm glad to hear that, that many of you are from there, Central Luzon, especially what is known as the Pampanga Triangle, Angeles, San Fernando, 
subic, and chloride. That will be another Metro Manila in no time at all. In fact, if you take a look at the big real estate developers, the Ayalas, the Villars, Mega World, all of them have big projects in Central Luzon. In the Visayas, the most attractive urban area now is Iloilo. Cebu, like Manila, is already congested, traffic and so on and so forth. Iloilo has the best infrastructure now in the Visayas area. And especially once they finish the bridge between Iloilo to Guimaras to Bacolod, that will be a huge metropolis. And at the same time, still with a lot of touristic uh, attractions. As you know, Guimaras is a touristic island. In Mindanao, it's a no brainer. It's the one that's growing very fast. And real estate development there is matching almost the rate of Manila. Some real estate prices in Davao are almost like the prices of Manila. So I think I've said enough, and I'm sure some of you will have questions. Thank you very much. Sorry. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Bernie Villegas. Yes. You know, um, the, 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 your optimism is really um, encouraging, especially at this time. And then, um, you know, um, I, I read an article, uh, your article in the business world, um, wherein actually it's, the, it's called the Enduring Humanity of Work. And then uh, your article uh, mentioned about we must devote our attention to investing in the human capital of the less privileged members of the society. Ang sabi nga ni Dr. Villegas, para sa mga nanay ito, in today's knowledge economy, ang new asset class para sa productivity growth will be the human capital. Your talent, skills, creativity, and that's what Dr. Bernie Villegas mentioned earlier. Marami kayo niyan, mga nanay and micro-entrepreneurs. Kaya improve pa natin ang mga sarili natin. Kagaya ng mga sinabi ni Dr. Kanina, Dr. Bernie, na yung mga produkto natin, wag lang tayong tigil doon. Huwag tayong susuko. And then, surely, sabi nga ni Joey, we will be in the global supply chain also. Thank you, Dr. Bernie. But before this, um, before I go to the next part of the program, uh, some questions came in. And then... Um, uh, we might be able to, uh, Dr. Bernie might be able to answer them, but if there is Please. time constraint, uh -oh, uh, then we will answer them on our Facebook page. Uh, let's call on Joey uh, to be the moderator for the questions and answer. Uh, thank you, Joe. Uh, Dr. Bernie, uh, the first question that came in was from Rizal uh, Raul Reyes of the Business Mirror. He's asking, um, what is the role of digitization in all of this? Uh, development efforts? Well, obviously, the sector that did not suffer from the pandemic, but actually benefited from it, no, was the digital sector. So just imagine all the education online, most of the purchases are online, and now here you have juriscaparate.com. So definitely, the whole area of digitalization has benefited a lot. It has actually grown in six months, what it could have taken three years without the pandemic. And that is why I'm so glad that Escaparate is making the nanais already part of this sector. Whether you, you, whether you know it or not, you're already part of Industrial Revolution 4.0 because you are actually already using the digital uh, technology to improve your business. So, but we have to keep on learning new things. So that is part of skills development. Nanais have to be upskilled, have to be reskilled, have to be retooled in the area of digitalization. And you can count on escaparate.com to help you in that process. So remember, learning should never end. Education is a lifetime process. And Fortunately, there are groups like Escaparate that are going 
to enable you to learn as long as you want. Thank you, Dr. Bernie. Uh, there is a question from Jose Rene Gallo who asks, uh, what do you think about farm tourism? Where, where does it come in, in, uh, in the entire development agenda? Oh, definitely. It's very much part. And in fact, the uh, Secretary of Tourism herself, Bernadette uh, Romano Puyar, is giving a lot of emphasis to agritourism. Uh, uh, people precisely from uh, urban areas uh, like us, when they go outside of Metro Manila, they enjoy taking a look at what they never see here. You know, I always remember one of our students, and probably Rene will remember it in, uh, in CRC, when we went out on excursion, he was looking for where the peanuts were growing on trees. No? Yeah, he thought peanuts grew on trees. And there are millions of people from Dasmarinas, from Forbes, et cetera, et cetera, that don't even know how uh, some of these uh, products are grown. No? And so agritourism is definitely something that we should focus on. And especially if you are able to intersperse your vegetables and fruits with the beautiful flowers that we can grow in many places in the Philippines, like in Tagaytay. And I was just in Sri Lanka Vite and uh, since I'm a, a, a Lantito, I was so glad to be able to buy. Right now, the zinnias are in bloom and there's so many colors now of the zinnias that are already ready there for planting. You just bring it to your home and you have a nice garden. Thank you, uh, Dr. Bernie. Uh, a question from Santi Dumlao. Uh, the exactly. aggregates look good, but how do you reduce income inequality? Well, that's exactly what Mayani is doing. You, uh, you should have more projects like uh, Escaparate, Mayani, and so on and so forth that address specifically the needs of the poor. I'm so glad that now the phrase ESG is being used by all companies, whether big or small, meaning whether or not they are social enterprise. And clearly, uh, Escaparate and Mayani are social enterprises. They, were, they are for profit, that, but they want to address a specific social problem. And that is poverty. But many other companies, whether it's San Miguel, whether it's the Ayalas and so on and so forth, are building in what is known as the ESG concept to do something either for the environment, environmental sustainability, that's E, for social problem, like uh, addressing poverty or improving the quality of education, for example, like the Ayalas, no? And finally, governance. Now, that is really more difficult thing, how to eradicate corruption. And uh, we're seeing that uh, right now. My only consolation, and I hope I'm not uh, misunderstood here, is one can be a first world country like South Korea without completely eradicating corruption. I'm sure those of us who watch this Korean uh, telenovelas know that there is still so much corruption today in South Korea, both in the government and in the private sector, which more or less shows that even if we don't succeed in our effort to eradicate uh, corruption, as long as we have the right economic policies, institutions that are independent of the politicians, we can become first world like South Korea. Thank you, Dr. Bernie. A question from Joel Valdez. Where are we going to get the money given uh, the deficits uh, to pay for the development that uh, we're hoping would uh, transpire post pandemic? That's why I'm saying those of us who are uh, in the know are fighting with all our might to convince, first of all, those three uh, measures public utility, retail trade, uh, ration, uh, rationalization, and um, there's a uh, uh, Foreign Investment Act. They can be passed even without revising the constitution. And I think they can be passed. They're very close to being passed. So that can open up more of the public utilities sectors to foreign investments. And there are really a lot of foreigners the Japanese, the Koreans, et cetera, know that they have a limit to what they can invest in their respective economies. But they're accumulating capital. 
and they see Southeast Asia as the best area. And now most of them are just going to Vietnam. But if we don't change our policies, that will continue. So that's the first. And in the next government, I will continue my advocacy for removing from the constitution and uh, without false modesty, I must say that I was part of writing the constitution and I knew very well how people during our generation were still so ultra nationalistic. I don't want to be considered a hero, but I was one of the few who were saying we have to open up to foreign investments. But practically all of them, rightists, leftists, whatever they, they were also saying Filipino first. And that is no longer a, uh, an ideology that will help the poor. Filipino first only helps the richest Filipinos to control the economy and done to the rest of us. That is what Filipino first has done in this country. Thank you, Dr. Villegas. Um, there are a lot more questions, but you know, you expect that every time uh, Dr. Bernie speaks, uh, the, the, the questions just flood you. But uh, we will just ask one more question. The others will probably answer to our Facebook page. We will ask Dr. Bernie to answer them. But the last question came from three listeners. Uh, they ask about the demographic sweet spot that you were referring to. Uh, are we squandering this uh, demographic, demographic dividend and how much more runway do we have for this? Well, the first uh, problem we have to solve is to improve the quality of education, to address that very well-known fact that our pupils do very poorly in international tests. So, but I'm glad to see that there are a lot of people in the business sector are doing what uh, Joe is doing in this area. There's a Philippine Business for Education, top executives really helping the government to address this problem of this low quality of especially our public education. So that's one way that we will not squander these young people. And going back to food, I'm part of a foundation started by some executives called the Philippine Food Bank Foundation that has convinced a good number of very large uh, food companies like Central Pacific, Alaska, and others, San Miguel, and San to get their soon to expire products to our foundation, which we now distribute to especially hungry children. I specify children because the quality of education is very related to the way children are able to eat the necessary nutrition when they're, when they're young. Because if they do not have the right nutrition when they're young, their brains are already permanently damaged and that explains part of the reason why they cannot have good education when they go to the elementary schools. So we have to address that. And that's why anything that can be done by the private sector to address the quality of food of children, especially of the poor, will also be done to the improvement of quality education. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bernie. Uh, we will email you the rest of the questions that came in. I yes. hope that you can right. answer them so we can publish them uh, for everyone's consumption. But before I turn over the floor back to uh, our MC, uh, I'd like to uh, relay a message from three of the nanais who sent in messages saying, thank you for giving them hope. So salamat, uh, Dr. Berg. Uh -huh. And yes. I turn it over back to um, Joe. Okay. Thank you, Joey. And thank you, Dr. Bernie Villegas. <laughs> Now, um, we'll have the last trivia question. Slide, please. Okay, and the last question <coughs> is, what is the flavor of the mushroom chicharron that was promoted by Scaparate.com? Letter X, barbecue flavor. Letter Y, garlic flavor. And letter Z, it's cheese flavor. Barbecue flavor is letter X. Garlic flavor is Y. Cheese flavor is Z. Mamili po kayo ng letters X, Y, or Z. Lahat po yan masarap. Okay. Now, to formally close the program, 
please join me in welcoming Ben Avancenia, a founder and chairman of Scaparate.com, a founding partner and CEO of One Asia Healthcare Solutions, and the former international vice president of Johnson & Johnson Medical Devices and Diagnostics, and currently director of various companies and nonprofit organizations. Ben? Okay. Um, okay. Can everybody hear me? Yes, Ben. Okay. Um, thanks so much, uh, Joe, and marami uh, salamat sa sa inyong lahat. Bigyan niyo ako ng pagkakataon na masummarize kung ano yung napakinggan natin itong nakaraan na nakalipas na mga dalawang oras. Uh, Unang-una, uh, happy birthday sa Escaparate at sa lahat ng mga nanay at sa mga partners namin na, na nakasama dito sa, sa Escaparate. Unang-una, narinig ninyo kung paano nagsimula ang Escaparate. Uh, isang panaginip, isang pangarap basas, base sa pagnanasa na makatulong sa ating mga kapwa na lubos na naghihirap dahil sa pandemya. Narinig din ninyo yung mga nanay na kahit papano ay naniwala at natulungan ng eskaparate. Narinig din ninyo kay Joey kung saan tayo papunta. Madami ang pagbati ng madaming mga nanay at mga mabibigat na personalidad kasama na doon si VP Lenny. Talagang nakakataba ng puso. At huli, narinig natin kay Dr. Villegas yung mga oportunidad na meron sa Pilipinas at kung ano ang posibleng hinaharap natin, may liwanag pa pala. Ang importante, bukas na isipan, sikap at tiyaga. Ngayon nais kong magpasalamat sa mga organisasyon na, ka, na nakatulong sa ating iskaparate. Unang-una, nais kong magpasalamat sa Kasagana Ka Co-op. Sila ang una namin partner. Si Maya Ignacio na narinig niyong magsalita ay naniwala doon sa aming pangarap, sa aming panaginip na makatulong eh, sa pamamagitan ng plataforma ng iskaparate na online, online selling. Uh, Mayan and Kasagana ka have been responsible for onboarding 124 nanays of the 270s na kasama natin ngayon. Nagsimula sila sa, tre sa 33 at ngayon nasa isang, uh, 124 na sila. Siyempre gusto ko magpasalamat sa angat buhay at sa opisina ni VP Lenny. Yung angat buhay ay nagpasok ng labing, labing, labing lima at pitumpo sa, na mga micro-entrepreneurs sa ating platforma. And they also created wide public awareness sa iskaparate. Nakikilala ang iskaparate dahil sa tulong nila. Nais din namin magpasalamat sa Paymongo for providing the payment billing and processing platform and for promoting extensively on main on mainstream and social media of course to mayani.ph for bringing us to their selling events creating a storefront for us nanice.ph to go negocio for promoting escaparate to the participants of its mentoring programs the department of health and industry for allowing us to participate in their monthly selling of events min college for upgrading the look and feel of our existing website and creating our brand book and creatives. Horace Thomas of True Real Inc., a Canadian company for being the first sponsor of Nanais on the platform. Go Moto and Jervice Motors for providing fulfillment support. And we have other partners who have been responsible for onboarding their Nanais. Babasahin ko na lang. 
Simbag sa Pangasenso, JV Ongpin Microfinance Foundation, Tarlac Provincial Cooperative and Enterprise Development Office, samahan ng nagkakaisang pamilyang pangtawad, pangtawid at likha, likha initiative, Central Azucarera ng Tarlac Employees Dependence Cooperative, Foundation for Enterprise Management Innovation, Moncada Women's Credit Cooperation, Office of Representative Chris de Venecia, Pangasinan Entrepreneurs Association, at Progresibong Kababaihan ng Pililya. Nakikita nyo na ang dami-daming nagtutulungan dito sa platforma natin sa Iskaparate. Yung nag-umpisa dahil sa pandemya, ngayon naasahan nating magiging ang platforma sa pamhabang buhay. Ngunit wala ang pagbabago, ngunit ang walang pagbabago sa ating pangarap ay ang makatulong at maiangat ang kabuhayan ng apo, ating kapwa Pilipino, lalong-lalo na sa mga naghihirap na may pangarap at handang sumikat. Baby pa tayo ngayon, pero mabilis na maglakad. Sa lalong madaling panahon, tatakbo na tayo patungo sa katsaganahan. Mabuhay po tayong lahat, mabuhay ang eskaparate. Maraming salamat, Joey, for all of your leadership. Thank you, Ben. Ang sabi mo nga ay bukas ng pag-iisip, sikap at tiyaga. Tandaan po nating lahat yan. Hindi lang mga nanay, hindi lang mga micro-entrepreneurs, kundi tayo pong lahat. Salamat, Ben. Now, i-announce natin ang mga winners. Uh, I have here the winners for the first question. Uh, can you flash the question, please? Okay. What product was promoted in iskaparate.com FB page last September 1, 2021? Letter A, palabok ni Nanay Jenny. Letter B, choco banana loaf ni Nanay M. And letter C, hand-painted wood ni Nanay Corazon. The correct answer is letter A, palabok ni Nanay Jenny. Siya po yung nagsalita isa kanina. Okay. Then the winners, there are five. Uh, ang unang winner is Mary Grace Valdez. The second is Rachel Bernal. The third is Ana Garcia. The fourth is Ariel Serrano. And the last winner is Arnold Guerrero. Okay, so paano po natin malalaman ang mga tamang sagot? Punta lang po tayo sa iskaparate.com. The second question is, from where do our Iskaparate Entrepreneurs Exotic Yakan products come from? Letter K, Mindoro. Letter L, Bohol. And letter M, Basilan. The correct answer is letter M, Basilan. Meron po kami dalawang nanay dyan, Ate Riza Babon at saka Nanay Lala, Laila Tadjak. Si Lanay Laila Tadja ay taga Lamitan City, Basilan. Okay, and then uh, yung third question. Ah, sorry, I'm sorry. The, the, the winners for the second question, uh, apat lang po ang nanalo. One is Donna Quintana. The second is Rizal Raul Reyes. The third is Ray Laguda. And the fourth is Marites Pangan. Okay, so the third question is, what is the flavor of the mushroom chicharron that was promoted by iskaparate.com? Letter X, barbecue flavor. Letter Y, garlic flavor. And letter Z, cheese flavor. Okay, so ang tama pong sagot ay letter Y, garlic flavor. Meron akong nakitang 
message from Ray Laguda. Meron, meron bang premyo? Meron po, 300 pesos. At saka uh, makukuha po ng mga winners ang kanilang premyo. Uh, Magbigay uh, lang po kayo ng inyong contact details sa iskaparate.com. At doon po namin makikita at papadala po namin sa inyong mga uh, actually bank transfer or GCash. Okay, so the winners for the third question is Sela Corinne Gonzaga, Ana Garcia, Benny La Fuerza, Enriquita Navarro, and of course, siya kasi yung gumagawa nito, Malin Rubrico. Okay, now, um, okay na ang ating anniversary, maulan, pero it's been a lovely Wednesday morning. There it is, we've seen what Iskaparate is doing for the micro-entrepreneurs and how the partner organizations are supporting it. This doesn't end here though, because as I speak now, we are getting applications from entrepreneurs. At this point, May we invite other micro-entrepreneurs and guests to visit iskaparate.com Facebook page because now and then you'll get updates and promote yung mga events po na pinopromote po namin. There is no timeline when service and promoting the interests of micro-entrepreneurs begin. I would like to thank people who worked with me on the first year anniversary. Rami Buiser and the rest of Iskaparate team and Vince Marquez who stood as the technical director. It's been a pleasure being with you today. Marami pong salamat. Pasok na mga suki! We are Iskaparate.com An advocacy helping nanas in a platform for their homegrown businesses. Our nanais sell delicious food, homemade crafts, and more. Every purchase helps uplift a family and a community. Bisita na! Hi!